All right, everybody, praise the Lord. Good evening to you. I'm guessing this is Wednesday. I lose track of my days. I just praise God for a day closer. Just one day closer, man. I praise God for you all who are faithful in posting the dates every day and uh, reminding us of what day it is. So praise God for that. Uh, counting to the grapes, counting to the wheat on the 360 prophetic calendar. 360-day prophetic calendar, we're counting to the wheat. And on the calibrated calendar, we are counting to the grapes. Amen. We're looking at some very important dates, the 16th, the 23rd, and every day between the 23rd and 30th to me, man. Looking over these old posts that I made in Facebook and seeing Stellarium and all of our numbers that have come together, the 923, the 924, the 925, that's not really big in, in the numbers, but it was on Stellarium, but 926, we keep coming across that one. 926, 926. And on my Facebook today, I posted a picture from 11 years ago that Darren put together, our buddy Darren, man, that guy. He's going to have some crowns in glory. We praise God for him. But he put that together and uh, made some good notes on there. And I'm so thankful that he did. It reminded me, you know, thank God for short pencils. Because that sure outlasts a long memory, don't it? Amen. Notes. Take notes. And uh, so he, he made some notes on this thing. I encourage everybody to stop by my Facebook page and look at it. And uh, But it was uh, the, the picture that he took from Stellarium was from his house in Truman, Arkansas. And on that date of uh, 926, 2017. Now, he actually took it four years earlier than that. Four years and a month earlier than that. But praise God for Stellarium. It shows you where everything's going to be in the future, where it's going to be. And that's why God says it is sufficient. Stellarium is good enough, man. It marks my skies because God's so perfect, guys. He put everything into orbit. He put it into perfect orbit. And you could know a thousand years from now what this sun, moon, and stars are going to look like. Because God, he's a great conductor, the, the, the orchestrator of it all, man. And he puts it in motion. He puts it in line. And praise God, he's included Nibiru in this. Every time he comes to judge, his Nibiru system comes through. And we praise God for that. Uh, Jenny says, good evening, fam. Tyvon, hey, bro. He says, hey, everybody. Hey, man, bro. Good to see you, dude. Good to have you with us. Um, but we just praise the Lord that we got that. So stop by, stop by my page. Look at that old picture because it tells a lot. 926. 2017 was 1,260 days from the very first blood moon at Passover on the Jewish calendar of the four blood moon tetrad. Tetrad means four. And so it was the four blood moons, and God was marking the skies then to get our attention. I hope he's got your attention. And I hope you're getting his the attention of everybody around you through your post, your witnessing, through everybody. Get their attention. Jesus is coming and so is his judgment system. Nibiru, coming to kill you. Kim says, hello, beloved friends and family. Oh, brother David says, hey, family. Hi, brother. And uh, so Heather reminds us, guys. She has great notes on here. Every night, remember what we said about a short pencil. And these notes are imperative. Check out the notes. Make sure you're saved. Once saved, always saved, saved. Okay. And without the shedding of blood, Jesus' blood, you couldn't have been saved. And there's no other way to be saved other than his blood. Quit trying to save yourself and be such a good little boy and girl. And quit trying to do all this religious antics that are so hilarious. If you step back, I'm going to step back and watch you do your stupid rituals. And I know the truth about salvation. You look like the biggest retard, idiot, fool. And you're so serious. You're so seriously going straight to the eternal lake of fire and meet God's wrath, and you look stupid doing it. Why don't you quit trying to do your rituals and your rites, and why don't you just trust by faith in the Lord? Because he said that's what impresses him, and that's the only way to be saved. For by grace, God's gift, are you saved through faith? It has nothing to do with you. It's a gift of God. It's not of you. Lest you go boasting about it. And dude, if you could see what I see concerning your rites and rituals and burning the incense and confessing to a faggot, pedophile priest. How stupid are you, man? You're pretty stupid. We're going to call you out of that and be wise. Fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
And we're going to call you out to do that. And if you're going to be saved, and if you're going to go to heaven God's way, and if you're going to be caught up in the rapture, you're going to be saved by grace. You're going to know that it was all a gift and it was Jesus who did it. His blood, his persecution, his trial, his pain, his suffering in your place. That should have been yours. And he did it in your place. He became your substitute and the father was satisfied in his taking your place to free you from it. Now, he's taking care of the sin issue. He's waiting on you to believe it. Whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ and his finished work shall not perish in hell, but you shall have, guaranteed, have, no so, 100%, Holy Spirit sealed salvation. And we want this for you because the Lord wants it for you. And what we do and our goal and our prayer every night is to bring you God, bring you edification, encouragement, to bring you his love. And also when we bring you God, we got to bring you his wrath, his warning of wrath. I'm going to warn you of wrath. It doesn't mean you're going to be under the wrath if you'll believe. But if you will not believe God's grace, God's story, God's salvation, once saved, always saved, you're going to hell. And I must bring you the wrath of God every night. We're going to bring you God. We're going to bring you all of God. Okay? And he's coming to save us from himself. That's what salvation is. He's coming in wrath. And if you're not at the cross, if you've not been saved, if you've not placed your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, you're under his wrath. And you got to know this. you got to believe this. And so we want you saved by faith, belief. The Holy Spirit will come inside, infuse you with his righteousness. You're once saved, always saved. Then get busy reading the Bible, becoming a great disciple. Kick the world out, okay? I'm, as your discipler, I'm going to tell you you have nothing to do with the world. Unplug your TV. Unplug your music. Oh, that's just such tough discipleship. That used to be what discipleship was until Satan got a hold of discipleship in America. Now Satan wants you to have your fun and Jesus too. It's a different Jesus. Jesus isn't the fun, fun, fun God. Okay, That's the American lie, the American nightmare, dream they call it. It promises you the pursuit of happiness. You and I, in Christianity, in following our Lord Jesus Christ, we're pursuing holiness, sanctification, God's heart, God's will, God's way, his word. What does your word say about this, Lord? That's what I want. And people don't like God's discipleship. But we do. We're a small group who cares about God. We love God and we, we want his discipleship in my heart. I want it in yours. So 101 discipleship is get rid of the world, flush the world, and get you know Jesus. Get him 100% in your heart, in your mind, in your thinking, your thoughts, in your training, in your conversation, in your vocabulary, in your doings, in your thinkings, in your musings, in your sleep, in your eating, in your drinking, all to the glory of God. Carlos, praise the Lord, brother. Good to have you. Robert, hey, buddy. Hey, friend. Oh, Robert, man, we're about ready to get raptured, dude. We're about ready to be called up. Hallelujah. So read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read it every day, 10 to 20 chapters, 10 to 20 chapters, and download, she puts the link up here, that ebook. Get it down. No, and there's been one more added to it. We had 530, now there's 531. Come on, dude. About the real location of Mount Sinai. You dig that? We went over that last night. Check it out. Hey, you want a couple fresh ones? Let's do that. Let's go over a couple fresh ones tonight. I welcome you all here. God is good, and to God be the glory. And God welcomes you too. Glad you're a part of the family of God. And we praise the Lord for you. Amen. All right. Why don't we scroll up to here. All right. Let me bring up this picture. We got two small ones to show you, but they're powerful, right? Uh, we were gifted a marriage retreat in Alaska. Oh, I missed it. Leaving Saturday for Bush for two weeks. We will be very, very little slow cell service. All right. Well, God bless you, man. Looks like Jenny's going to Alaska. She and her hubby. Praise God. Hey, we love you, sister. Pray for your good health up there. Heather says pray for the two witnesses, guys. F faith. Pray for the two witnesses, Sean and the other guy. The 144,000 witnesses. Okay, pray for them all and the people who will be saved. Great faith. Uh, just show your faith to the Lord as you pray. He loves your faith that you believe his word. I, I believe this, so I'm going to go ahead and pray for it. Man, I'm going to pray accordingly. 
Okay. All right, let's look at this first one. So yeah, man, God's good. This little tall, skinny dude. Now, I want you to make a note here when you're seeing this, that red line that you're looking at, it actually goes down farther. After he sent this to me, he saw that it continued on. And see that green one and that blue one at the same exact angles? They're at the exact same skips. Both of them say Mitchell at the top and at the bottom of this thing. Okay? Incredible. Incredible. Be -be 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 -be. I want you to know it. All right. And this term is only used twice in the Torah. And this one here has those, those two Mitchells in it that you just saw, the green and the blue. All right. The first ELS in the Torah is negative 79205. Negative 79205. 79,205 between each skip spelling this. He was troubled at Jabal Allah's. Moses. Moses was troubled at Jabal Allah's, the real Mount Sinai. And then you got, uh, yeah, Mitchell and Mitchell. And so that's what continued on through. What, what you saw in the red was Jabal Allah's. And then what he saw that continued on was he was troubled at. All right. So praise God. And let's see what else it says here. He says, uh, yeah, that's that note. The first part is missing, but it joins to the blue Mitchell. Okay. And that part starts in Exodus 12, 12. We like that number 12, 12. Is that 24? Hey, getting ready for bed. I'll rewatch the stream. Been having trouble sleeping. Pray for me. Amen. Happy anniversary, Jenny. Amen. Amen. Amen, bro. We'll pray for you. Thank you. There's a lot of that going on. There's been a lot going on, man. The microwaves are cranked, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Here's what the part that, uh, the, the beginning of that runs into Exodus 12, 12. For I will go through the land of Egypt that night and will smite the firstborn. Hmm. Sounds like leaving of Egypt and heading to Sinai to me. And Egypt is the USA and he's going to kill the firstborn of Satan that night on the East Coast. And that includes every denomination, every religion, atheist. If you're on the East Coast, you're dead. And then the rest of this will pick up. I'm sure Sean will be going to Mount Sinai. That's one of God's four places on the planet right after Bible study last night. I just completed Enoch. And I said, what am I going to read next on top? You know, scripture. We read the scripture. That's a given. And then what's mentioned in the scripture is the book of Jubilees, which is called the Little Genesis. I said, well, I'm going to read the book of Jubilees again because it talks about every 50th year, every Jubilee. In this Jubilee, this happened. In that Jubilee, this happened. And one of the things was Jubilee 317 mentions my birth date. Now, we know Noah's flood happened on that date, but that was also the date at 8 a.m. After seven years of being in the Garden of Eden, Satan comes to Eve and tempts her. On the 17th day of the second month. Now that startled me. And it was in 317. Jubilees 317 told about 217. That had my attention. The Lord always gets my attention. Pay close attention to this, man. Okay, so you pay close attention. Then you, I got farther down and it showed God has four places on earth. Now we know Jerusalem is his. Okay, that's his one city. But he has four places on earth. One of them is Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, the Garden of Eden, the mountain to the east, and it'll come to me. But praise God, I'm sitting there reading that stuff. God gets your attention. Let him get your attention. This is the area he wants you to really focus on. How many of y'all knew that Satan came to Eve at 8 a.m. in the morning? Now, th that is a, a note. That is a bracket note there. But it came to her seven years to the date. They had been in the garden for seven years. And then, boom, here comes Satan. I thought that was great. Sean has talked about that here in the past, too. That, that same exact passage. And so what is God saying here? Uh, that part where, you know, he was troubled at the mount? 
For I will go through the land of Egypt that night, and I will smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against the gods of Egypt. Oh, I'm so ready for that. I am so ready for God to have vengeance and all these stupid bail gods and all these football teams and all this stuff that's worshipped, country music. God's going to tear down the music industry, destroy it all in the USA. There will be nothing left. You know, all rap started here. Right? Rock, rap, blues. All that started here, and all the influences from it. Jazz? That started right here in the USA. God's sick of it all, man. He's going to destroy it. I love it. Come kill their gods, Lord. Come kill their gods. In the name of Jesus. And the bottom Mitchell, remember there were two Mitchells on this thing? The bottom Mitchell starts in Deuteronomy 9.10. And the Lord delivered me unto me two tables of stone written with a finger of God, and on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spoke with you at the mount of, uh, out of the midst of the fire, okay? So th this is the two tables of stone talking about Mount Sinai at Mount Sinai and this Mount Sinai verse, the real location of Mount Sinai. Now, Sean's looking for others. Sean's looking for others that tell us the real deal. Hey, thank you. May you rest well, says Jenny. During the tribulation, uh, there is a book of Adam telling the whole story detailed. Apocrypha? Yeah, I'm not sure on the book of Adam. I'm, I'm thinking that is some pretty, maybe Diablo stuff. I, I've read those books. I have read the, all the Apocrypha. But I go with the ones that are mentioned in Scripture. Jubilees is mentioned. Jasher is mentioned. I would love to read the book of Gad. And there's somebody putting that together right now. They've transcribed it to the English. And they're going to make an audio script of it so you can listen to it as well. And the others, Book of Ido and the others, okay? But these others, these others, if they're not mentioned in Scripture, I'm like, bah, humbug, get away from me. Because God's sovereign and God knows the future. He knows what would be discovered. And he made mention of us, uh, what would be readable and shareable. And aren't this, you know, isn't this mentioned in the Book of Jasher? The sun standing still for Joshua and all that. Yeah, love Jasher. Yasher, we call it in Hebrew. All right. Then we also have, in, in that one we just showed you, it's Exodus 35, 33. And in cutting of stones for the setting, and in the carving of wood, to work all manner of skillful workmanship. Right there. All the rules, all the law coming down, and the word of God is cut in the, in the stone, man. In the stone of heaven. Give, given us, aren't you thankful for this Bible code? Aren't you thankful that you can put a solidified trust in the codes of Sean Mitchell and know you're getting the word of God? etched in stone, carved in stone, chiseled eternally in stone. Hallelujah. Leviticus 8, 15. And when it was slain, Moses took the blood and he put it upon the horns of the altar round about his finger. Now, this is down there at the tabernacle. Where did he know to do this? He learned it in Sinai. The whole book of the law came to him at Sinai. The Ten Commandments carved in stone, those were at Sinai. Both versions. God gave him an audible version, gave him a carved version that God had made himself, and then Moses breaks them, and God said, okay, you're bringing your own stones up next time. And then Moses had some two stone tablets prepared and took them up, and God wrote on them again. Don't go breaking these. Amen? Amen. Uh, and he did it. He dipped round about with his finger and purified the altar and poured out the remaining blood in the base of the altar and sanctified it to make an atonement for it. Hallelujah. And then that laws, the name of the mountain there, what do we say the whole term is? The whole term is he was troubled at Jabal Allah's. And right where it says laws there, it ends in Deuteronomy 9, 7. Remember, forget thou not how thou didst make the Lord thy God angry. He was wroth in the wilderness from the day that you came up out of Egypt. There wasn't one day he wasn't angry with you. Please don't let this be you, saint, okay? All saints are going to heaven, but you know there's a group of saints that anger him daily, totally tick him off. Please don't be a part of that, okay? You could be a son and you could be a rebellious son. Don't be the rebellious one, man. Love Jesus back. Love him. Honor him. Be faithful to his word. Read his word. Know his word. Be careful to let him know, oh, Lord, I only want to do right. Help me do right. Pray and ask, and he'll answer your prayer. That's according to his will. And if we know it's according to his will, he hears us. 
Amen? And he grants us the petition we've desired when we've prayed it according to his will, not our want. His will. Don't be listening to the charismatics and those stupid Pentecostals, okay? You pray the word of God to him. You pray what he's placed in your heart to pray to him. And so laws ends right here. You guys have troubled me every day since I brought you up out of Egypt. Terrible. You know, the day you were saved, you were brought up out of Egypt. Egypt is a type of sin in the world. Don't trouble the Lord daily. Why don't you seek to please him? Do the right thing. Until you came unto this place and you have been rebellious against the Lord. You know, this place, Sean's going to be at this place. Uh, Jesus is coming back soon. There's a big rock ready to hit the earth. Yeah, there is. There's a bunch of rocks, big rocks ready to hit the earth. You're right, buddy. God's going to judge his place with fire and sulfur and smoke. Going to be choking people out with the fumes that come off of these meteorites. All the toxic poisons in the dust. Oh, the fumes will be killing folks, guys. Oh, that rock didn't hit us. Just wait for that wind to waft your way and see what happens. People are going to get sick, man. It's going to be bad pestilence. Why don't you get saved now? And you saved folks. Why don't you quit being rebellious now? You're so wrapped up into preseason football here in the USA. Come on, dude. Baseball. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You're going to hate yourself in the future, how cheesy and chintzy and how stupid you were. Just to keep up with the conversation at the water cooler. It's like, man, why don't you change the subject and let's get to God on this thing and his judgments are coming, folks. Amen? And the, the Mitchell at, at the above, remember the two Mitchells and you, and you had the main term? The Mitchell above starts right here at Genesis 49, 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the end of days. And that's what's happening right here. This is what's happening. Sean is gathering all of us together, the, the believers in Jesus Christ, you first and also to the Greek, and trying to get us the story and trying to get our hearts straight with the Lord and in, in line and on the same page with our God. Amen. We're about to go see him and we want to be right when we go see him. But then he's also going to come back after he gets glorified with the other guy. They're coming back, and they're going right to Israel. And they're going to be telling them, hey, we're at the time of the end. Gather around. Listen up. Those of you who have faith, listen up. And one-third of Israel will be saved. And then when Jesus comes back, he would have killed two-thirds of Israel. And then the Bible says, and all of Israel will be saved. Everybody who's, who's lived through Jesus killing everybody else... They're going to be saved, and they're going to look on him whom they pierce, and they're going to cry, and they're going to rejoice, and they're going to just, oh, praise him. And Sean will have taught them three and a half years earlier. He, he will have finished his teaching to them and leading them and shepherding them in these Bible codes, man. So here we are, and that's what I was saying. We were brought up. We were saved up out of Egypt. God has brought us to the rock that is higher than I, Jesus Christ. And that picture in the Old Testament was Mount Sinai. We have the true location of Mount Sinai, and boom, here we go. From here to the rapture, is your life, can it be pinpointed by the Lord as pleasing or rebellious? Pleasing or non-pleasing? As a joy or a headache? Oh, but I'm saved. I didn't ask that. I'm talking to you as a child of God. Are you a joy or are you a headache? Are you, do you walk by faith or are you an incredible frustration to the Lord because of your doubt, your misery, your love for the flesh, your love of the world? What are you? You better analyze yourself. According to the word of God, let it judge you and you judge yourself lest you be judged. And why don't you walk faithfully? Why don't you be a son who's well-pleasing in the eyes of our loving God? Amen? Amen. And here we are, uh, Numbers 217, there I see it again. The Lord's like, do I have your attention yet, Johnny? Well, sure, Lord. Then the tent of meeting with the camp of the Levites shall set forward in the midst of the camps as they encamp. So shall everyone set forward, every man in his place, by their standards. So when the cloud moved during the daytime, uh-oh, it's time to pack up, guys. The Lord's directing our steps. We're heading on. We're moving camp. Or if the fire did it at night. Okay, pack up. We're heading out. And the temple would start first, the tabernacle. 
and they would pack that tent up first and it would lead the crew and everybody would follow along according to their ranks, man. Praise God. And that was all given to us at Mount Sinai. The fire of God. The landing of God. Amen. Hey, why don't we look at another one? Praise God. That was our first of the fresh scene. Fresh codes. And here's the next one. Well, that's a little dude. All right. Come on, dude. Come on, buddy. All right. And here's what it looks like. Kind of smaller font. We'll come over here to the edge. Bam, bam, bam. All the way to the edge over there. And here's the whole thing. Bam. All right. Let's see what that one's all about. And that is at a negative skip of 93,790. From the bottom, 93,790 going upwards. And here's what it says. He caused a storm upon the true Mount Sinai. He caused a storm upon the true Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. Chief Cornerstone says, Garris, hey, good to see you, brother. Heather, amen, a double feast of manna. Praise God, amen, amen. This is at that skip of 93,790. He caused a storm upon the true Mount Sinai. Not the fake one, not the lie, not the one everybody thinks is Mount Sinai, but the real location. And God has clarified it and declared it true in the book, The Codes of Sean Moses Mitchell, in stone. That green verse you saw down there at the bottom is Proverbs 25 to what? Yeah. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to keep searching until you find it. Hallelujah. Everybody says, Mount Sinai is over here. Hey, look, there's Mount Sinai. And God says, no, it's... It's over here. And he's had several people go before us and declare that's where it is and show proof and have video footage and here's that and here's the other and here's the rock of Horeb and, and God's proving it true. Their location has been wrong and now he's saying you better know the right location. And in that pink and blue that you saw together, it says Elijah the prophet. And what that's referring to is when you see the Mount Sinai, you can see his signature. It's going to be the same signature you see on Mount Carmel, the burning up at the top of it. And at the top of this mountain is lava stone. Now, it's not a volcano, but there's lava stone up there because it was caught on fire and just, and just melted down like lava because God had touched the scene. And God brings it in here, Elijah the prophet. Now, Sean's Elijah the prophet. He's also Moses. I think he'll be going to this location. I think he'll be going to this location, and they very well may call down some fire from heaven. I, I don't know that, but I really believe they're going to this location. They're going to hide here, and I believe Elijah himself went to this location, okay, even after Moses. And it speaks of God burning the top of the mountains like we see at Jabal Allah's, Mount Carmel and Sinai. God's touch, God's signature. And when you see fire coming down, that's God. These guys tried and they cried and prayed all day. The false prophets of Baal, oh Lord, send us down some fire. Pentecostal churches, boy, we had the fire of God come down today. Well, that wasn't the fire of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the fire of Satan, your other God, your real God, your fake Sinai. You better be saved. There is no fire of God without God. All you Baal worshipers, all you people who believe you can lose your salvation, you don't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's a whole different God you worship. That's why fire ain't falling. That's why ain't legit fire. And God's calling you out of the fake into the real right now, and that's what this process is. Not the fake Sinai, the real Mount Sinai. And God says that he, in the book of Jubilees, he has four places that he calls his own, and Mount Sinai is one of them. The real Sinai, that is his place. And it speaks of God burning the top of the mountain, just like we see at Jabal Allah's, the real location of Mount Sinai. And it could be something in the future with Sean and the other guy. Um, I think it could be. I don't think it's going to go to waste. I don't think God's mountain will just sit there. Just sitting there. I think the Jews are going to see as a wonder and a proof. 
Now, I've not seen any Bible code on this yet, but I just know how God does with his wonders versus the lying signs and wonders that the Pope and Obama will be pulling off. And everything they're going to do is to deny the Bible and the Bible code. And God's going to use these guys to make the Bible code come alive for all these people with true signs and wonders. And I just have to believe that something's going to happen here in the future at Mount Sinai to help solidify the truth. God just wants people to believe. He wants them to know the truth. And he'll show, he'll pull every stop. And those four places on earth are his, and he can do whatever he wants at his four places. So I have no, I have no doubt in my mind that it could happen here at these uh, locations. Okay, God calling down the fire from heaven. Uh, Elijah's cave is there, and the next verse shows when it says holes in the rocks, that's a cave, and it's at 719. So we have 719 in this code, Isaiah 719. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the rugged valleys and in the holes of the rocks and upon the thorns and upon the brambles. Now, and that's where Elijah is resting, right there in that portion. You know, and Heather brought up a good point last night. Is this where the Jews are going to go and hide in the rocks and in the holes? We'll see. We'll see. It's God's place. Do you think you're going to come near God's place and not be fried and burned unless you've been invited? I can't think of a better place to hide folks than his mountain. One of his four locations, or all four of them. And you. God, the God of the fire, he'll bring down some fire on you. He'll kill you if any animal or human touches the mountain. He'll destroy you. I couldn't think of a better hiding place to hide in the crevices and the rocks. And so Elijah rested there. It, and it just so happens to start in Proverbs 25, 2. That whole passage. Elijah rested there, guys. And uh, what was that? It's the, you know, God loves to hide things and he loves for kings to search it out till they find it. He doesn't hide them to keep them hidden. He hides them to keep us digging till we find it. Hallelujah. I love these Bible codes. What a blessing. Is the Garden of Eden spiritual? People can't find it at all. Yeah, it's one of God's four places. It's one, it's one of his four places on earth. Is the Garden of Eden, uh, Mount Sinai, the, oh, the mountain to the east and Zion when Jesus comes back. That's, that's, his, that's his holy mountain. That's always been his holy fires, his portals. That's where he comes down with fire and truth. Okay? Praise God. Great question. Joshua says, I turn 23 tomorrow. 23 is death. I think this will be the perfect age to get raptured as to serve as a witness to chaos that will happen right after. Praise God, dude. I believe every bit of that. I believe every bit of that. And congrats on that. And, and this is August, and we have till one month later, and it's going to be the 23rd year since the towers fell. It's all the testimony. You and the towers, you as a believer in this. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that with us, dude. Hallelujah. God says, Ezekiel 30, 15, I'm going to pour my fury upon sin and the str stronghold of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitude of no. There it is again. Remember that in that code the other night? Sin and no. God hates your sin and he hates you fool saying no to him. Guys, there's a whole bunch of Christians, believers, who've said yes to salvation and they got the salvation part right and they say no and everything else. You're still a fool. You made it to the beginning of wisdom, but you've not progressed in that wisdom. We're encouraging you to quit telling God no. We're encouraging you to grab the Bible. We're encouraging you to believe the Bible, read that thing, and know what it says, and follow along closely and dearly. Ezekiel thirty fifteen. God says, I'm going to pour my fury upon sin. That's your sin. And I'm going to pour my fury on the strongholds, and I'm going to cut off the multitude of no, of fools who say no. I love it being right here. This is perfect, man. This is the perfect time. And uh, when the saints go hiding, the elect go hiding, one-third of Israel goes hiding at mid-trib, they're going to be at a place where God will protect them. We know that. And we also know that Obama thinks he can come get them and find them. He's going to get close. He's going to pour his 
army flood out on them. And God's going to open up the earth and swallow them up. Say, anybody else want to get near my mountain? Anybody? He draws the boundary for his mountain. That's what the name means. God has a boundary there. Happy early birthday. Josh says, thanks, brother. Praise God, says David. Amen. God's holy, man. God's holy, David. And he's going to take care of sin. He's going to take care of no. I'm going to encourage you folks to say yes to Jesus. And don't live in sin, even after you've been saved. So many saved people live in sin and say no. God hates that thinking. He's, he's going to save you. You're going to miss out on rewards. But the people who weren't saved and live in sin and embrace their sin and say no, yeah, God's going to cut you off and he's coming in fury to burn you to the ground. Believe it. God's given it twice in less than a week now to us. I think he's saying something. You better listen to what he says. Numbers eleven sixteen, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers of them, and bring them up to the tent of the meeting, that they may stand there with thee. Sean is going to find the leadership, the people who know the Bible and have come to believe that Yeshua is the theme of the Bible and has been the whole time. The salvation of Yah, the salvation of God. Jesus is who we refer to him as. And they're going to believe. And he's going to call those elders along and start teaching them the ways of God, the plain text, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the coded text. He's going to train them and teach them just like Moses, Pappy Moses did. And God said, get 70 of them. And it just might happen an overlay of the same thing because God does this. Mm, mm, mm. What he's done in the past, he has done in the past again, and he's done in the past again, and he'll do in the future. Boom. And here we got that numbers 11, 16. Get 70 guys. I need to train them and teach them. And he did. 70 leaders. And they'll be in charge of all 12 tribes. And slowly, God is going to let them know which tribe they're part of. God's going to let Sean know these things. And coach them and shepherd them and teach them and lead them all the way until it's, he's taught them everything that they need to know. And then God will call him and the other guy to heaven. Exodus 25, 9, according to all that I show you, this is God. And he was showing him on the Mount Sinai in this very location. Heather says, Jehovah's patterns are perfect, man. Absolutely perfect, guys. And it's for us. Each generation needs to know his pattern. So we can look at last generation's pattern and know it'll be the same here because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. Exodus 25, 9, according to all that I show you from the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the furniture thereof, even so shall ye make it. And he showed him all on the holy mountain of Sinai. God said, hey, Moses, I want you to come early, come ready, come alone and come higher. That was, that was what he commanded Moses to do. And that's what you and I do every day in our Bible reading, in our Bible meditation, in our listening to the Word of God. We come early. That means when your brain is freshest is what that means. It could be late at, late at night. But you come early, you come ready to hear me, and you come alone all by yourself, and I'll take you higher. How many of y'all want to go higher? I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Amen? Amen. Grow higher and higher in the things of the Lord through his word. He'll take you higher on Mount Sinai, his holy mountain. He's called all of us to there, except now our holy mountain is Calvary. In the church age, hallelujah. And so it was right here in Sinai that God showed this, the place that now we now know we have a solidified word of God in carving in stone telling us the location of Mount Sinai. And it happened right here is where God gave him all the directions of the law and how to build the tabernacle, how to build the furniture, what to do, how to do the specs, measure this out. God loves measurements. He loves measurements, guys. Okay? He doesn't have any cut off. You know how a carpenter will measure out a board and will have some cut off? Any of God's drop off is usable. It's not willy-nilly, a little thing forgotten. God forgets nothing. He uses everything. He'll use the sawdust to his glory, okay? He has no drop-off. All the measurements are important to him, okay? So he gave that to Moses. 
We also have 1 Corinthians 16, 32 in this passage. Let the sea roar. That'll happen the night of the rapture. That'll happen at the sixth seal earthquake. That'll happen when wormwood drops its load right in the water. It's going to be a water event. It's going to poison all the waters. Other mountains falling. It's going to be water event after water event after water event. And let the sea roar. Get stupid hill song down there. And the sea will roar at the sound of your name. They don't even know that's their own destruction. Those unsaved fools who live on the ocean there in Australia and all around the world. The sea is going to roar at the sound of his name. He's coming to kill you unbelieving fool retards. Always singing their own death, man. Uh, Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near. He's nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. And this is tribulation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved calling on the name of the Lord, but you better first have your know, know that your belief is what saves you here. I, I called. Look, I, I did a I did a A, B, C, D. I did the A, B, C's. Of that pastor out there in uh, Hawaii. And that's why I'm saved. No, it's not. You're saved because you believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And you placed your trust in that. You, you jumped into that. Th that's your life. That's your existence. That's your eternity. That's your truth. God's truth is your truth. That's how you're saved. You believe God. And you believe his plan of salvation. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, man. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. Who that call upon him in truth. And here's where the code ends. Ezekiel 16, 52. Thou also which hast judged thy sisters. Oh, this is bad news, man. Because Judah was worse than Israel. Israel was taken out by the Assyrians. And 100 years later, Judah was taken out by the Babylonians. And now the East Coast, all those Jews, half, half the population live in America. And most of those are on the East Coast and they're all going to die that night because they've been far worse than the others. They've had Jesus come to them. They've had the face of God, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They've had the New Testament given to them. They've had the Bible codes for 10 years, the Jews on the East Coast. Several of those Jews, lost and saved, are friends of Sean's. Levites. They read his codes. One will send him a clip every now and then. And they're responsible more than anybody because they have the complete everything of God. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the man Christ Jesus and his word and his dialect, these Bible codes, 531 of them. Let's keep reading. Ezekiel sixteen fifty two. Thou also which hast judged thy sisters, bear thine own shame for your sins, that thou hast committed more abominations than they all. They are more righteous than you. What? Northern Israel worshiping the two calves and having the Baal of Jezebel are more righteous than you, America? Yep. More righteous than you, Tel Aviv? Oh, yeah. You guys are some wicked bastards. Wicked fools. Wicked whores. Abominable. They are more righteous than you. Yea, be thou confounded also and bear your own shame in that thou hast justified thy sinners. Thy sisters. You, you, you haven't been so bad. They, they, well, I don't know why God killed them. I don't know why there was a holocaust and six million died. Because y'all refused Jesus over and over and over and over. The holocaust happened after Jesus was death, his death, burial, and resurrection. It happened during Pentecost. You were invited to come along to the mountain. You were invited to hear the trump of God sounding in faith. And you didn't. You did worse than your sisters, Sodom. Worse than your sisters, Egypt. Worse than your sisters, Samaria. Worshipping the calves. Worse than your sisters, worshipping Baals. Because that's what America is. We are Baal worshippers in this country. And we have spread that propaganda, that wickedness all around the world through all of our outlets. Remember me mentioning the types of music that came from here? The folk music brought to us from England and we distributed it a whole different way. We made it famous. We got it on records. We got it on sheet music. 
We sent it all out, man. All of our stuff is wicked and we have not praised God here. And it's going to be worse on you than it was your sisters, Israel. Let's look at that code again at the top. We'll read it through smoothly. It was at a skip of negative 93, 790. He caused a storm upon the true Mount Sinai. I think this is a future event. I think this is a future event, so Israel will believe. And these verses going through here shall say, guys, you're wicked. You're more wicked than your sisters. Why don't you believe Jesus? Why don't you call on him? He will save you to the uttermost, man. And he won't deny anybody who calls on him in truth. These verses, remember all those verses we just read? Remember, the Lord says he hides things, but he wants you to find them. Sean's going to create a storm. And I, I think it's Sean here creating a storm on here. God creates the storm. He brings the fire. He brings the lightning. He brings it all, but he uses men to do it. He caused a storm upon the true Mount Sinai. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Elijah the prophet. And that speaks of God burning the top of the mountain. He did it then. I got no problem thinking he'll do it again. I don't have a thus says the Lord on that, but I have the patterns of God and I have the witness of God. And God calls him Moses and Elijah. Both of those guys had fire fall on their mountain. One at Sinai and one at Carmel. I have no problem believing it can happen a third time with, you know, Moses and Elijah. Do you? Hey, praise God. Why don't we look at one from yesteryear? Yesterday we began speaking about a code concerning the six seal earthquake, the pole shift. And we'll talk about another one of those today. October 8th, 2022, Siberia will be the witness and the great sign of the destruction to the world. And so will North America. You know, that's Canada too, right? USA, you're going to get cracked in half. God is going to split the globe. And we're thinking, I'm thinking, it's at the New Madrid fault line where I live. I stand as a witness about that. And we have codes saying about the New Madrid fault line and the Six Seal earthquake. Okay? God's going to split the globe right here. He's done it before in the past. He'll do it again. He's got no problem. It's his globe. It's his footstool. He can do whatever he wants with his footstool. Amen? Amen. Siberia will be a witness and a great sign of destruction to the world. And so will North America. You've been told lies your entire life. God's word is the only truth. God's word is the only truth. I read the Simpson creators get their predictions off the black web. Yep, I believe you're right, buddy. The highest of the cabal, high, highest of Kabbalah. They see things nobody else does. People in Hollywood, the high priest. Um, Steven Spielberg. He's seen things that nobody else sees and then turns them into fiction. We need you to get this on a screen and let's call it fiction. And that's what he's done. And here's famous quotes that fools will say. Hey, the earth's flat. Rob Skiba, burning in hell, Rob Skiba. And all you, Jonathan Matthew Wright got so angry with me speaking God's truth. Rob Skiba got everybody off of grace, practicing Saturday worship, Sabbath worship at home, having to know the law to please God. When what pleases God is faith and you believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This guy used to be an independent Baptist and went straight Hebrew roots retard. And he brought us the flat earth. The earth is flat. God says you're a fool, you idiot. What else do fools say? Pole reversal. Why, that happens all the time. It's nothing to be concerned about. Canadian prepper, all these other idiots. We'll survive that and they go on. You idiots, you fools. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell, God's word in his dialect. We need to go ahead and see what that skip is because that those numbers are everything to God. Over a quarter million between each letter, between each red of those red dots going straight up the page, and these are going upwards. 257,569 between each character in the text, the Old Testament text, from Genesis to Malachi, those skips spelling this. What does that just the red letter say? The plate in Siberia will testify of everything. 
the location will be jammed into her. Does that sound like coherent English? Does that sound like a couple cool sentences that God would just, you know, hide in his word for us to decipher and Sean search it out and labeled it for us? All we got to do is believe what, it's, what we're reading. Do you believe the Bible code? You better believe 100% of them. 531 published ones in that book. Download that link that Heather puts up, man. Amen? All right, let's see the whole code. That skip was negative 257,569. 257, 569. 257, 569. 257, 569. Spelling that line we read you. Here's the whole translation. The plate in Siberia will testify of everything. The location will be jammed into her. It splits open the sphere. They became weak. The pole reversed. He shot the USA. It is the hour. Pay attention. The heap of ruins will rise so fast. This is where your mountains came from before. We have, I live in the area. It's the Delta of Arkansas, flat as a table. Flat, sea level flat as a table. Just filled with silt, good farmland. But I have this little ridge that runs all the way up the side of me, man. Running all the way here, Northeast Arkansas. And it's called Crowley's Ridge. And it came by way of an earthquake in the middle of this flat, flat table land. On either side of this ridge, it's, it's not a mountain, it's a little hill. It's really cute, it's really nice. The houses up there are really neat. You got great views all over this farmland. And it's right in the middle of all this flat field. And was created by a crushing, a slamming, a small one. This one here we're, about, we're describing is a huge one. And God says, brace yourselves, here it comes. Let's read the translation again. The plate, that's the Siberian plate, will testify of everything. Told ya. The location will be jammed into her and it's going to split open the sphere, the globe. The globe's a sphere, you idiots. Hey, Jonathan Matthew Wright. The globe's a sphere, you retard. And all you flat earth idiots, you guys, get this to your flat earth idiots. And if you're a flat earth idiot, repent. And get your thinking and your heart and your teaching and your beliefs in line with the Bible code. God says he's going to split this sphere in half. Amen? Jonathan says, Eden family, pray for everyone. My family and I love you guys. Love you too, brother. God bless you. Glad to have you with us. The plate in Siberia will testify of everything. The location will be jammed into her. That was a skip at over a quarter million throughout our Bible, the Old Testament text. The location will be jammed into her. It split open the sphere. Spell that out, guys. Sphere. It's a circle. It's a ball. They became weak. The pole reversed. He shot the USA. You, know, you mean that devastation on the night of the rapture wasn't enough? Nope. God says, I haven't uh, judged you according to your heart just yet and all your wicked works that you have performed. That's the East Coast. This splitting of the sphere is going to happen, you know, more over to my area. The Mid-South and the Mid-North. All the way up to the Great Lakes and down. And then there's more coming after that. And this is going to be the great uh, pole flippage. It's going to be the slam, bam, thank you, sir. The way they talk in today's language, all the faggots. They became, as it, guys, guys, when everybody tells you to smash that button, smash that like button on YouTube, wherever, that's satanic homosexual talk. Don't be involved with that. Stay away from that. And that has been talked for 30 years. That has been a term for 30 years that I know of. Underground, it may have been longer. And then it turned out into the, into the heterosexual. I like to smash that. I want to hit that. Satanic, guys. What they've done is they've taken God's lingo and they've made it sexual into their religion. Remember, their religion is all about fertility and sex. God's all about judgment. I'm here to kill you. Amen? And that's what he says here. The location will be jammed into her. It split open the sphere and became weak. The pole reversed. He shot the USA. It is the hour. Pay attention. The heap of ruins will rise. Versus Jeremiah 50. Uh-oh. That's the USA. The destruction of Babylon, USA. Jeremiah 50, 52. A sound of battle is in the land and a great destruction. How is the hammer of the entire... We go around smashing everything. Thor. 
we smash everything to pieces. You're going to do it our way. We're going to come in and destroy you, Iraq. We're going to get your weapons of mass. They found nothing. But they did kill a multitude. I'm talking in the tens of thousands of innocent little children and villagers who have nothing to do with Saddam Hussein. They hated him too. The hammer of the whole earth is now cut in sunder. Does this, does this verse come alive for you now? When God tells us he's going to open up the sphere. He's going to cut the sphere in half. That's what this is talking about. USA, USA, New Madrid. The sound of battle is in the land and the great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut in sunder and broken. How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Ezekiel 7.27 the king shall mourn and the prince shall be clothed with desolation and the hands of the people of all the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way. Why does God keep cranking it down on Babylon? Because he hadn't matched their way just yet. Their ways have been evil, 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 evil. And he does it in stages so they can get saved. So when he starts heading to the next stage, all those people who died there could go to heaven. Maybe they can believe from the night of the rapture when the East Coast went missing and maybe the folks right there around the, uh, you know, the sphere cracking right around the New Madrid fault line will believe by then when God comes to kill them. And that's when we see all the souls in heaven right after this event, guys. God's going to kill a bunch of people who learned their lesson and believed at the rapture, since the rapture. And they're going to go to heaven with us. Praise God. Kim says, I want America to be destroyed. Me too. They're so wicked, guys. All the children's stories, man. I just hope you never learn of the stories I know. You just pray for them in faith. Oh, the king's going to mourn and be clothed with desolation. And all the hands of the people and the land will be troubled. I will do unto them after their way and according to their deserts. What they just love, their delicacies. That's the way I'm going to judge them, God says. Hallelujah. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Let's read that translation again. We'll call it a night. God's word in his dialect at that amazing skip of 257,569 between each character. Perfectly skipped, perfectly measured, because God loves perfect measurements. And a perfect couple of sentences here. The plate of Siberia will testify of everything. The location will be jammed into her. It split open the sphere. Oh, they became weak. The pole reversed. He shot the USA. It is the hour. Pay attention. The heap of ruins will rise. Amen. Let God be true and every man a liar. Men, women, and children underground, above ground. Yeah. Kill them all, man. Kill them all. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you for these codes. We thank you for the true location of Mount Sinai. Thank you for letting us all know this. It sure seems obvious you're about to come get us that this truth needed to be come out chiseled in stone before we go up. And uh, we know you're going to direct Sean there again. It sure seems like it. And the other guy. And I just pray, I pray that Israel will be saved. We pray for the salvation of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, your arrival in seven years. We love it. We love to be a part of this. We're so thankful you've taught us your truth. You've given us hearts that are humble, that will take, take reproof and rebuke. We want that, Lord. We want to know if we're wrong anywhere. Straighten us out, please. Please humble our hearts and make us so sensitive to everything about you and everything about truth. We want to walk in you. We want to walk in that and live holy lives and share and warn others. I pray for Sean that you'll bless him. Keep having him find these amazing codes, these amazing truths that you want us to know before the rapture. And uh, just as we count down the days, we're excited. We praise you for the counts and for letting us know about the right calendars and the, and the true dates and what time it is. We praise you for that. And we glorify your name and bring us back safely until tomorrow night, 726. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, guys. Come on back tomorrow night by God's grace, 726 p.m. Central.
Amen. Brent says, so the South Pole will be the North Pole? It might be. It might be a 90 degree turn. It might be a 90 degree turn. Instead of turning all the way around, it might turn like that, halfway, halfway or a quarter round. Okay, so we'll see then. Y'all, you know, Brother Jonathan says, amen. George, amen. Carlos, amen. Sister Aaron, amen. Clay, to revisit the other books, what about Second Ezra? Yeah, Second Ezra is real close. Second Ezra is about right now, about God's judgment time. Okay, Second, it's called Ezra. How do you spell it, brother? Edris, something like that. Second Edris. Jenny says, amen. David says, amen. Josh, amen. Praise God. Heather, in Jesus' holy name, amen. Kim, great night of revelation as always. Thank you, Sean JB. Sister Adrian, amen. Give us all the wisdom to honor your holiness. Amen. Kim, Esdras, Edra. <laughs> it's one of those two. <laughs> amen. Oh, my gosh. Joe says, amen and amen. So thankful for the clearness of the preaching of the codes. Hallelujah. My favorite one. Amen. Amen, guys. Yeah. Uh, however you pronounce it, Ezra's second book is a pretty dang good book. And he, like Sean and all of God's men, had to suffer greatly to get it right. All right. E-S-D-R-A-S. E-S-D-R-A-S, the book of Esdras, and that's Ezra. That's his second book, and it's about the apocalypse. It's about what's coming, and it's a very great read. Amen, guys. All right, I love you all, and by his grace, we'll see you at the 726 tomorrow night. Love you.